Sure, Orion Today, we're back on the air. Ian Locke here for another edition, uh, Executive Director at Owen TV. And joining me today on the show, Jim Robeck, uh, longtime volunteer with Owen TV, jack of all production trades. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've been with us forever. Um, thank you for sitting in on a pinch. No uh, problem. We had, I think, uh, not to. This is not negative. You're our third option today. Just, hey, and we called him up and said, Jim, you got to get down here. Our, our, get, our guest host can't make it. And he hightailed it down here. So thank you for saving the production today, Jim. No problem. <laughs> if I'm available, I'm here. As always. I mean, right. how many times have we called you and said, uh, we need a camera operator in the <laughs> studio right now, right? Yep. So here we are in the studio, Orion today. You know, this program, it's us talking about what's happening around Lake Orion, what's going on um, in the village, what's happening around on the edges too, and like Rochester, the different things you can do in town, right? So here we are again, this edition. Uh, one thing we have to remember, remind everybody is don't forget to get out and vote, right? right. This, is, uh, this program airs on Tuesday, so it'll be election day uh, when you see us, uh, our, our lovely faces on Owen That's TV. The precincts, yep. And so get out there and vote. Make sure you get it. It's very important that oh, you gosh. do your civic duty, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, a lot of proposals, a lot of uh, candidates, uh, a lot of different things. Oh, Politics. We don't want to. That's not what this show no. is. But we're, you know, we're going to encourage people to get out and vote, uh, vote. and do their that's, civic duty. That's the right? key. Vote, vote, vote. Absolutely. So um, it is fall here in Lake Orion. And is there. I've lived in Lake Orion 22 years. How long have you been here? Uh, since 96, about 22. 22, okay. Yeah. So I think fall in Lake Orion is the best season, don't you think? Oh, without a doubt. With the lakes here and the color that we see, it's just so vibrant. And the sunsets and sunrises today are just phenomenal. They're blazing, right? The oh. sun's a little bit lower on the horizon, and it, it just looks great. Lake mm -hmm. 16 is ablaze with the colors. With right. the, it's just amazing. So uh, Halloween just concluded. Kids are all hopped up on candy <laughs> and uh, looking forward to the next holiday, Thanksgiving around the corner. But uh, Halloween around here, the different activities, the parades, trick-or-treating, cider mills, man. Oh. Oh. Uh, how are you? Are you a cider fan? Oh, absolutely. Oh, gosh. I had a buy it. I, was, I went to one place there in Nova. It was like $9 for a gallon. So I ended up saying, hey, it's only five ninety nine at Kroger. So I got a Kroger. <laughs> it's expensive, the cider. It, it's expensive, but I, I, I don't mind spending the no. dough because no. uh, that, oh, that really on-site made, on made cider, there's nothing, nothing like it. Like it. And, uh, of course, of course you got to get the, the heart-stopping greasy donuts to go with them. <laughs> oh, they're not that greasy. They're pretty good. Jim. Especially when some Yates, you know, we have well, to talk about. Well, yeah, Yates is just around the corner. Yep. There's satellite location at Canterbury Village, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to go to the mothership, right, the main cider mill is in Rochester. And I, I don't know if I know of another cider mill that is, like, if you wanted to see tradition... If you said cider mill, what would you pop pop into your mind? A water wheel. And water wheel, and, water, and that's what you get over there. It's, yes. it's fabulous. Um, one thing we, you know, if you are a cider aficionado and someone rolling around the orchards and stuff, uh, grabbing, you know, your seasonal apple bags and mm. all these other things, uh, Blake's, love Blake's. Oh. Uh, if you're on your way to Romeo, Blake's is right there. Um, and uh, we got some news that they're taking over, over the Irwin Orchard. So uh, there was a rumor that Blake's was shutting down or doing something weird. And my family, my kids were like, oh, what? <laughs> they can't do you that. You know, they panicked because that's our, uh, that's our favorite. Tradition, yeah. And so um, we ran over there real quick and got our gallon and two dozen two donuts. Dozen donuts. <laughs> and we find out, well, they're not shutting down. They're just absorbing another small um, uh, cider mill. Did they have that big hay bale there? Yeah, I mean the hay stack. Yeah, they have hay stacks. They have um, tours. You can go picking in the orchard. Hay ton, rides and whole nine. Ton nine of people there, and especially this time of year, yes, as you know. Yes, absolutely. Um, what's another one? A uh, Franklin. Have you ever been down to the yes. village of Franklin? That mm, cider mill. Beautiful. That's, that's another one of those yeah. uh, really nice traditional. quaint places to go to. Yeah. It's like yeah. a painting. You'd see a little watercolor, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that one. I'm from Dexter. I grew up in Dexter. Anybody? Anybody know where Dexter is? No? It's just outside of Amherst, a little farming yeah. community. A thumbs up from camera one and two. Went to Gore, toward really? Elm all the time. See it all the time. Yeah, and Dexter. That's where I grew up, out in the out in the country. And we have a, had a cider mill in town for over 100 mm -hmm. years. So we love our cider and the oh, Locke gosh, family. Yeah. So anyway, um, you've been traveling. Yes. 
And You've been just, out and about. Yeah, I just got back from Italy, a great place to visit. And it's interesting, I just read something about do they celebrate Halloween in Germany? And they do not. So I don't know about really? the other countries. I don't know the rest of Europe if they celebrate Halloween, but I just read an article. Germany doesn't celebrate Halloween. Which really? I thought it would be something interesting. No, it was a yeah. great uh, visit there, but not to talk about that because we got other things to talk about. It was a great country, you know, side of Italy I never saw before. And the most impressive thing about that was seeing the Leaning Tower Pizza. That was just, I mean, you walk around the corner, you see that, and you say, no way. <laughs> I mean, you see in the pictures, but it doesn't do no justice to what yeah. you see and, and, and see that thing leaning. And you know, you, can, you still look at it and go, really? Really? You can go up in it? No. Okay, I, good. I was like. <laughs> no, they, those, the lines were too long, and it was uh, like 300 and some odd steps. But there are lines. You can go in it. Oh, yeah. You can oh. go to the top, yeah. I, that, I don't think that's for me. Well, I would like to, but it was, it was, we don't have an hour and a half there, unfortunately, okay. but it was pretty good. So, well, and, and like you said, we, we have so much time here yeah. to chit-chat, um, but if you want to learn more about Jim's travels, he and another volunteer here at ONTV, uh, George Sennett, they produce a show called Active Living, mm -hmm. and it's been, I mean, how many? Uh, 20 it, events, yeah. A ton of them. And so they get together, and Jim shares pictures and artifacts and knickknacks and things, of his travels, uh, we have a whole library of these episodes, right. <laughs> um, and I'm great. You know, it's great because post pandemic, you can right. you you go all over the place mm -hmm. and uh, see everything. And we always have a great time when you get back. We go, what'd you see? And yeah. we, we usually do this: sit around, <laughs> right. and he's showing me pictures and Absolutely vicariously fantastic. living through you, Mr. Robeck, uh, run, rolling around uh, global. Uh, uh, jet setter. So yeah, <laughs> when I was out, well, I just read about you know talking about you know, how's the ending the season for the football here with Lake Orion and such. Yeah, we're gonna get into sports <laughs> at the end. Unfortunately, okay. you know, I guess I'm giving it away, but we'll get into details of how that happened. Um, but uh, yeah, it we were hoping for a Better miracle. Results. It didn't quite happen. Um, so I. Th Think where are we at here? Like again, this we're recording this live, and we have no script. We're just chit chatting, um, and I don't a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, as as you know, if you tuned into Orient today, uh, we cover lots of different topics, different events. Again, we talked about the elections coming up. Get out and vote; it's yes. very important. Uh, get out and buy that cider and have a good time. But uh, there's uh, also a lot of different projects that might fly under the radar here in Lake Orient that you might not know oh. about. Um, uh, Blanche Sims Elementary, uh, oh. right? It's being pretty much a whole new building is being constructed in front of the old one. So uh, there's a program here that we've been producing with the Lake Orion Community Schools called Inside the Dragon. And uh, here's a little feature about Blanche Sims and its progress. It's coming along mm -hmm. and the brand new building, I believe, is supposed to be uh, opened next, next school fall. year, next fall in 2023. So here's a look at... Uh, uh, some information about Blanche Sims Elementary. This fall, the students at Blanche Sims Elementary have enjoyed a daily treat. When they returned to school in September, they saw significant progress made over the summer on the new Blanche Sims Elementary School. Last spring, dirt was cleared, but the frame of the building was still slowly rising. This fall, the entire structure is in place, along with the floors and much of the roof. The Lake Orion Community Schools Board of Education and Administration took a tour of the facility in October and were able to see the paper plans come to life. It's exciting because, you know, we've been planning for a long time and to actually see it um, coming together and uh, being able to put your hands on it and see it, um, it, it's fantastic. It's very exciting to see everything falling into place. Well, where we're standing right now is the media center and that's uh, gonna be a wonderful space. Uh, nice and open, big, large area for kids. And then the extended learning areas uh, in each of the corridors of the hallways um, will be extra space where the kids will be able to learn and gather collaboratively. And that collaboration space is one of the things that we're missing now. So that'll be uh, a good thing to bring the kids. A few of the exciting features include the embrace of natural light, 
with massive skylights in some learning areas and huge windows in the classrooms to be able to soak in the outdoors. The construction process has been a massive undertaking, especially because much of the construction by district partner Rewald and Sons has occurred around the existing school. Here's some statistics from this massive project. There's been 30,000 yards of dirt excavated, over 116,000 blocks used, 112,000 bricks, and 2,500 yards of concrete for the footings, plus another 1,000 yards for interior concrete. The new school is scheduled to open in the fall of 2023 and remains on target to hit that date. While Blanche Sims Elementary will give the students a wonderful learning experience, it is also an opportunity to thank the Orion community for its support of the November 2018 bond and all it has and will do to transform the school district. You know, obviously highly important. Um, the families have supported our students all through this bond uh, by approving it. And, you know, this particular building and this community and the village uh, is just a great opportunity for everybody. And it's just... You know, like you said, it's just really, really important to the whole community. Yeah, it, it uh, is a little bit hard to kind of conceptualize everything as you look at stuff, um, but, but we know we're working with great partners and they'll make it all happen and we know um, what it is that we're asking them to do and we really look forward to it because it's going to be very exciting and, you know, kind of really want to fast forward. We're having a great year, but we really are looking forward to next fall so we can see our kids come into the doors for the first time. With most of the roof intact, much of the winter and spring will be spent working on the interior spaces as the building begins to take shape, giving those students in the current school more to watch out their windows and during recess. And back in the studio here, what a great video. The progress on Blanche Sims Elementary School is well underway, um, well needed. I don't know if you guys have seen Blanche Sims Elementary. It, it, it needed replacing badly, and uh, the progress is coming along. Uh, the walls are going up. I believe the roof is on, as you saw in the video. So progress is coming. A new, wonderful space for those uh, elementary school students, for the students here in Lake Orion. Uh, yeah, LOCS. Yes. So uh, we're moving on here. Hey, guess what? We have some guests in the studio with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Locke here again with Jim Roback in the studio. Um, VFW back with us again. Yes, we, once we're again. with you guys. Mm -hmm. We're with Chuck and Cindy. Cindy Wright uh, with us and uh, Chuck Haskins. So here we are talking about so many things happening mm -hmm. in town with you guys. You're so active in that organization. A great partner of Owen TV and the things we, you know, help go, help go promote through. and work together. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a great, great, great uh, a team uh, Part, effort between the two of us. And so you're here today to share some absolutely wonderful news about uh, different things yes. that the VFW is up to. So take it away. What are we talking about first? We're going to say something just happened. Well, this past Friday, yeah. we had the um, introduction of our new additions to the Orion Veterans Memorial mm -hmm. over on 24, and which was a great, great memorial before we put this in. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had Fabulous. an issue with our old Victory Garden okay. that uh, hit some wear and tear. So our good friends over at Home Depot turned around and came in, took out the old, and they built us a new one that should last us many, many years. Uh, it's basically made of stone. Very good. And, uh, but to include right next to the memorial or the victory garden, yeah. we have two new memorials. Well, there's room. Yeah, every, <laughs> <laughs> okay. fit, but there's, there's so many things there. So tell us mm -hmm. about the memorials. Yeah, it, this is really interesting. It is recognizing for so long that you know we have all those memorials for yes. different parts there. What we're recognizing now is Rosie the Riveter from World War II, mm -hmm. and all the hard work that the women did to supply you know yeah. help with the and we know the too. iconic mm -hmm. imagery mm -hmm. you know <laughs> the uh the hammer or the mm -hmm. wrench and we stuff. know that i mean so, it is iconic and the memorial goes and explains all that okay great so it's all there then the other one is another one we dearly should have had a long time ago but it's for the women of the military mm. uh world war ii was the start actually i think it even started in world war one but world war ii was the first time women got engaged in the and all the way up to the time is we have Cindy here, who was in the U.S. Air Force. 
-hmm. And but this memorial is there to recognize all the women and what they do mm -hmm. for it. And it really works with the new Victory Garden. There. Yeah, and it's it's interesting that you have those and. Uh, Expanding the memorial, the the fabulous uh, uh, the layout of it. Mm -hmm. Like we, we talked before we were on mm -hmm. air, we had a little chit chat about mm -hmm. it, of how f really wonderful it is. It's one of the best in the oh, state of Michigan, yes, yes, if not yes. maybe the Midwest for a community of our size. Mm -hmm. It's it's really fabulous, mm -hmm. and to have all the different branches represented and the new additions. And I don't know. Did you know there's a victory? I didn't know no, there's I a didn't victory know garden over there. I've been there so many times, never realized yeah, it. Uh, who uh, donated this? How did you come up with the funds to do this? Well, the major benefactor to us was uh, Home Depot. Mm. And Is that right? Made, made grants to do that. Then our post donated money also that go out and help do with was that, that for the statues or what that were, were being put up there? Just the victory for garden? The, for the materials. The materials, for the, ma the materials of the victory garden right. itself, Home Depot did the majority of that and some local people also donated some money. Awesome. Uh, the memorials, we for the um, um, Roses of the River, they had a group of people that got together and donated that. Then for the women in the military, our post donated that one. Awesome. Are they and plaques or actually images or something? They are plaques. Plaques, yeah, okay. Good size plaques. And it okay. uh, looks very, very, very nice. That's, very awesome. nice. That's amazing. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Home Depot, we, we <laughs> have to say thank We can't mm -hmm. say thank oh. you enough. Yeah. They helped out with the platform right. and the covering and. Mm -hmm. You know, for the uh, where we, all the presentations we are made. ask and they deliver. Mm -hmm. So it, it's they're fabulous, fa fantastic partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another item we just did with the memorial also was revealed on Friday, on the outskirts, uh, right over by twenty four. We have new seven flagpoles, stainless steel, with each one of the branches of the services. No. Okay. So that is up there right now, and so uh, it looks. I was going to say a new dynamic uh, look yeah. to it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it looked fabulous beforehand, yeah. but now you have that with the motion of the flags, mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. makes it dynamic. So stand it, out. you mentioned we're, we represent all the branches of the service. Mm -hmm. Well, we got flags for mm -hmm. all the branches of the services. Awesome. Even the new one, <laughs> Space Force. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, we have that there. No so, kidding. Yes. I don't think, uh, have I seen, have you seen no. the flag? for Not that? Yet. I would uh, never yeah. have thought of that, but yeah. yes, that's the new new branch mm -hmm. that has been launched a couple years ago, couple years right? Ago. Yeah. And uh, in its infancy, but... Uh, it's up, up and growing. Interesting. Yes, yeah, we're getting big. But uh, if you ever watch Star Trek, when you, <laughs> when you, see, that, when you see that flag, right. you, you immediately yeah. think of oh, Star kinda, Trek. Oh, kind of, it kind of echoes uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yes, that it does. Well, you have a familiar, mm -hmm. you know, color scheme and mm -hmm. um, imagery, so yeah. people can immediately recognize it. That's so, awesome. So, so. Uh, yeah, so... There's more going on. Oh. I mean, we, we have a list we, here. Yeah, we've got a very important day coming up here yeah, in November. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's Veterans Day. Yep. And there's programs going all over this, the state of Michigan. And um, two I can think of right here that can affect our area is up Great Lakes National Cemetery yes. is having a Veterans Day program. It's going to start at around noon okay. and go to about 2 o'clock. And that's a very solemn and if never, nobody's ever been up to Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is one beautiful, beautiful it's place. Yes. And but that night at 7 p.m. here at the Senior Center, at, at the Orient oh. Center, oh, right. uh, all three rooms are open. The whole place is open for this event. Right. Up. right? We are having at uh, starting at 7 p.m. Uh, we have a full program to recognize Veterans Day. Yep. We have a special guest speaker, uh, Brigadier General Whoa. Slocum. And, Whoa, uh, this is big yes, time, right? Big time. And uh, awesome. I've have seen the general up at Great Lakes. I've mm -hmm. seen him over and for programs over Selfridge Air Force Base. And they all, um, he's one dynamic speaker mm -hmm. and a true, true back friend. And tell, mm -hmm. So he can really add to the program. Yeah. And for the public to come up and see that would be a, a pleasure to do that. That's wonderful. And not only that, and I think I hear something. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the general's <laughs> calling. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, are they it's gonna okay. Have, I can turn off my phone. Uh, my, yeah. uh, I think they have the 21 gun salute again up there. They had, they brought somebody in the last do. time I was here. We, our honor guard, me and Cindy are part of. Okay. Uh, we will be out there doing the honor guard. Okay. And we'll be, be playing taps. Okay, yeah. super. For that. Yeah, so. and Owen TV cameras will be there. We yep. always record the event. Yep. We share it every year, and it's it's one of those events that uh, it people tune in. They yeah. they huh. they watch it. If you can't make it, they know it's there. Um, we've been recording. Well, we've been in this facility here for ten years now, mm -hmm. and ever since it opened, we've, we've held doing. it here. So mm -hmm. we've covered it uh, through. 
thick and thin and <laughs> right. pandemic and, you know, too. all this stuff, all this stuff it yeah. always the, happens, Yeah, the right? key thing is we don't do this just for the veterans. We're doing this for the community. They yeah. can mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. and learn Correct. what we all, what veterans are all about. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and once again, the time of that is 7 p.m. here mm -hmm. at the Orion Center so, um, on Joslin Road, yep. just south of Clarkston Road, the big blue building. You can't miss yep. it, right? So, yep. Awesome. Everybody come for a great time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, great time. And, uh, and to salute those veterans mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. make sure they keep them front of mind always, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, so Cindy, we got to yeah. get you involved yeah. here. Hey, so. Um, it's so mm -hmm. such a pleasure to meet you. you. Um, something I'd like to share. I mean, you guys put out a great, a newsletter. wonderful Never newsletter. And, and your newsletter, usually a page or two, yeah. this, this is amazing. It is chock full of information. It has everything you guys are doing, doing. Mm -hmm. and it has a wonderful write-up uh, of your bio and the experiences you, you had. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're here to share mm -hmm. um, information about another event coming up, but if you want to learn more about your amazing experiences, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, front row to history, really? yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, yeah. do, you, do you want to share just, uh, I mean, 9-11 was, kind of, I'm reading this with my jaws on the yeah. floor going, yeah. our veterans mm -hmm. have been front row to history. Mm -hmm. And always have been, right? Some have been overseas, some have mm -hmm. been home fighting, but they are front row to history, mm -hmm. and you are no exception. Yeah, so I was uh, part of the, Air I'm an Air Force nurse, retired after 20 years, but I uh, joined the military in 91 mm -hmm. and um, was fortunate enough back in 1998 to become a member of the White House Medical Unit team. It's a, oh. A team of doctors Impressive. and nurses and physician happen? assistants. That's, that's I know it, it was it was not me. It was God. But anyway, <laughs> right, uh, right. Um, I was there for a purpose. But um, yes. so we're there to provide medical care for the first family, mm -hmm. uh, the president, the first family. So we did a lot of traveling with them. Yeah. Um, so I started with the Clintons, two and a half years with the Clintons, and then um, when the Bushes came in, I became their nurse mm -hmm. and uh, happened to be traveling with them, the president when he was in Florida. And, and then when 9-11 hit, that was yeah. on 9-11, and so Reading spent to the elementary next, school yeah. students, and yeah, but I was we on know. The plane Were you on the plane coming back? Air Force One, yep, I was on the plane, and right. it was just I mean, a amazing give week, you a little. months, you know, type of, it certainly did change our history, it but. Did, it did. Um, Big impact. Yeah. And being a part of that yeah. and seeing it and having, you know, offering assistance where needed, right. and right. that that's, that's amazing. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much was, for what uh, you've done. Yeah. I felt very yeah. blessed to have been able to be on the Bush administration. It was amazing. People were amazing. And yeah. Everyone. Lifetime and experiences. Well, and, oh, well, and yeah. the stories you can tell around the fire, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. For yeah. sure. It's, we can go on and on. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, um, information about the VFW. You can find it. Your your post is, uh, you have yeah. Facebook. Just real quick. Um, Facebook, uh, you can find the page at uh, VFW334 for information mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. all of that. So, yeah. Cindy, amazing. But we're here yeah. to talk about a great event, yes. another event that's happening. Yep, so we're having a, uh, a recognition for our veterans yep. at Lake Point Community Church. It's going to be the next day, so November 12th, and it's um, the second annual, and it's open to any vet, and they can bring one guest. Okay. And we're going to have a great, wonderful homemade meal with desserts and door prizes. Hey, hey, can't go wrong, right? You, entertainment awesome. and guest speakers. We have two guest speakers. One is going to be Mr. Blake Leach, and he's the COO from the Warrior Journey. So he's going to talk to us oh, about geez. that program. Okay. And then we have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Miller, and he's a U.S. Army chaplain with the State of Michigan Chaplain Corps, and he's going to talk with mm -hmm. us. But I, I really do think it's going to be an amazing event. Um, the doors are going to open at the church at uh, 4 p.m., so in the yep. foyer we're going to have a reception and appetizers from 4 to 5, and then the doors will open at 5 o'clock to go into the main dining area, and uh, dinner will begin. And is this the first this annual? This is second. Second, second, second annual. annual. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we usually hear everything that's yeah. happened around yeah. town. Yeah. And this yeah. is the first time we've heard of this wonderful yeah. event. So I'm glad. I mean, timing couldn't be better to come in. That's why we're here. <laughs> yes, we're just it's kind of awesome. So yeah. it out having last another year. event was yeah. great. And but um, the, the key is that you yeah. have to call. Yeah. And on this flyer oh, yeah, okay. we're going to yep. put on there that you either get a call, Bob Timbush. Okay. 
or there's a website you can go out and sign up for. Okay, and I have that information yeah. right here. Yep. Uh, can I read yep. it? Uh, so, uh, Bob Ten uh, Babash, is that mm -hmm. how you say his name? 248 417 2451. And the website online is, uh, that's a bit. Yeah. It's a funky <laughs> website, <laughs> is, but yeah. we have a graphic on the yeah. screen presented yeah. there, so yeah. it's like bit.ly slash L-P-C-C-V-E-T. Yeah. Or, or call the church office. Or call the church yeah. office. Yeah. Do we yeah. have that number? Right. The, the key is you're going to call. They're gonna yes, we do. 248 yeah. is a church, mm -hmm. church number. Yeah. So right. another great event. Um, uh, for the vets to take mm -hmm. part yes. in, yeah. and make sure you call and get your tickets. Uh, do you have, I'm assuming, limited seating? Well, oh. uh, right now we have about 200 people. We're oh, hoping wow. for 250. Wow. So that's what. So. This is a big to do. Yeah. Yeah. Are they uh, required to wear uniforms, or just no. become just casual no, dress? Just casual dress. But if they want to, they do or not? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Just they, 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 they could because it's a day after Veterans yeah. Day, yeah. so they could still be still wearing wearing uniforms yeah. if they want it. <laughs> yeah. That'd but be nice. uh, our honor guard will be posting the colors, and uh, so the, it's going to be it's going to be a good event. Uh, sure. We have, I attended it last year, and a fantastic food yeah. served. I mean, it's all homemade food. I think so. it's homemade meatloaf. Uh, oh. meatloaf. <laughs> and this time of year, right? <laughs> yeah. The comfort food yeah. as the temperatures yeah. dip a little, mm. not so yeah. bad, mm. right? So, so it's great food, awesome events, great, great people, mm. awesome great events, people. Mm -hmm. awesome community service oh, yeah. here with our uh, friends from the BFW. Uh, Cindy Wright and, um, and and Chuck, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I think I got the wrap sign. I think we're getting close to it. So um, thank you so much for thank coming you, in. For nice, us. fun little thank discussion yeah. here. It's always fun to have you guys in. Thanks Keep doing what you're doing, oh. mm -hmm. and we're big fans. And uh, I can't wait to go see the Victory Garden. And yeah, me too. I'll stop on the way this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, are we moving on to a new segment? I think uh, the North Oakland Concert Band was in action uh, not too long ago. Uh, they're very uh, talented musicians mm -hmm. and volunteers and yeah. residents from around the area, around Oakland County, and they recently had a concert. Yeah, it was and they, Sunday, I think it did was you go? Idea. No, I didn't go. I missed it. Oh, and TV cameras, cameras yeah, were cameras there, yeah, so if you missed it, you can see it, see it on orientontv.org. Yeah. Yeah. But they had, uh, the collection was Symphonic Collage. So hmm. here's a little sampling uh, from the concert if you missed it. Take a look.
All right, back here in the studio uh, with Jim Roback, my good buddy, uh, hosting Orion today. Uh, Joe's on vacation, so a much-deserved uh, vacation. Uh, so he's out and about, so you're stuck with me. And then Jim bailed us out, well, as we <laughs> said at the top of the show. Our guest hosts disappeared. They had they had other things. I mean, we tried to get uh, diff uh, you know volunteers from the community mm -hmm. to come in, as you know, to host and yeah. help do these sorts of programs. And you no saved problem. our bacon, Jim. No, that's fine. So thank you so much. But anyway, what did we just see? We just saw uh, some footage from the North Oakland Concert Band uh, performing at Lake Orion High School. They have a whole stretch of uh, concerts all year round. Talented musicians up and down. It's unbelievable the yes, quality of musicianship well. that you can get when you go to these concerts. Um, they have their next concert is coming up on December fourth. It's a Sunday, and it's their uh, Christmas and holiday concert. And usually mm -hmm. it's at Chrysler Deemer Church. Has been on uh, Walden Road, and um, you know with pandemic and all this stuff, it's been kind of on and off and moved and all these different things. So. We think it's at Christ the Redeemer. If not, it'll be at Lake Orion High School, just like it usually is, okay? Um, and there's a North Oakland Concert Band website. I don't have it with me, but we can have a graphic on the screen. Hopefully it's up on the screen and you can see it now and you can make arrangements to go and listen to the holiday music. They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal, absolutely. They do a fantastic job. Fantastic. And you've helped out on productions, mm -hmm. recording those. Own TV cameras are always there. Yep. Did I ever tell you that I actually sat in and played. Oh, was that right? <laughs> that was. What that was? I remember that. Uh, that was years ago. Yes, yeah, so uh, I play the tuba. Yeah. Oh, tuba. I don't. I, I know. I don't fit the part. You know, tuba players look a different way. Um, but um, I sat in because they're tuba I, over the winter because everybody traveled south oh, for yeah. the winter, right? I sat in. Oh my! I, I've played. I played at MSU and yeah, different well, so things like that, that right? So I have played. Yes. Okay. Uh, Michigan State marching band. So, but I haven't played in like. <laughs> seven years when I sat in, I go, yeah, I could pick this up, and I'm getting lapped. You know, these musicians were oh my flying by me. I'm going, so, I felt like I was playing with my fists. You know, like I've never played this instrument oh before. Geez. And it was, not, I don't want to say humbling, but it's like, oh, man, I am way out of shape playing my instrument. But uh, they are phenomenal musicians, and the, the caliber of music they play oh, is yeah. It is top notch. Top so notch. Great doubt. stuff. You can't you can't go wrong with it. So I don't recommend if you haven't played an instrument in a while, go sitting in with a <laughs> group like that and going, yeah, I could do this. Mm, nah. nah, the stress level in my life went through the roof. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, this type of time of year, we we're talking kind of sports at the top yep. of the hour. Mm -hmm. Spart or not Spartan football, but we're talking Lake Orion Lake football. Orion, so absolutely. Lake Orion uh, Dragons. Uh, how did they do? Did you hear? I well, I read they were, the, they were in the playoffs. Read the review. Yeah, that's why I read. So, well, I didn't realize they played again because they were like five and five or something like that. I, yeah, I think they had uh, uh, one game under five hundred. Yeah, I believe, I think and they got like in the that, playoffs. Yeah. And they got in the playoffs. So, what? Well, I was surprised when I see this article playing. You know, I guess Rochester Adams is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the second time they played them, and it was the first round of the playoffs on the road um, at Adams. And Adams, if you've been following OAA football. Over the last couple of years, they went to the state finals last year, and they are no slouch. So mm -hmm. it's a tough draw first round for Lake Orion, um, and they were on the road, as I just mentioned, and uh, Adams, Adams got them. Mm -hmm. uh, their best player was their best player, yeah. and yeah, it, it didn't work out for the Dragons. Their season is over, but they they had a nice bounce back. And Coach uh, uh, Coach Chris Bell is back uh, oh, is that directing right? the team. Yeah, yeah. and. We saw that Chris Bell offense, uh, high flying, a lot of running, a lot of throwing, and it was an exciting season. And we missed you in the truck running replay for us. Well, sometimes you get, <laughs> well, sometimes you get picked, and sometimes you're traveling. You know, yep. It's, so it's anyway, traveling, yep. so it's yeah, so we do have kind of a wrap up of what the sports, uh, you know, season was like for Lake Orion High School. Here's a little video put together uh, so you can get a little recap. Take a look. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysick and the fall sports season has entered the playoffs. Today we will give some updates on varsity football and volleyball in their playoff games. The Dragons volleyball team began their volleyball district tournament against Pontiac on October 31st at Clarkson High School. Lake Orion took care of business and won 3-0. Their next matchup was against Waterford Kettering on November 2nd and yet again Lake Orion made it look easy as they won 3-0 once again. This would lead the Dragons to the district finals against the all-too-familiar Clarkson Wolves. 
The Dragons and the Wolves have reached the finals against each other many times throughout the years, and it constantly is a back-and-forth matchup. This was a home game for Clarkson as they were the hosts of districts this year, so it would be an uphill battle for Lake Orion, but they were not going to back down. Clarkson was able to take the first set, but Lake Orion was able to bounce back and won the second set 25-15. In the third set, Lake Orion kept that momentum and took the 2-1 lead, winning set 3, 25-17. As expected, Clarkson wouldn't roll over in one set four, 25 to 15. So it was all down to the final set. The score never separated the whole set as both teams were going back and forth. In the end, the Wolves made a small run that was just enough to give them the district championship 15 to 13. This was another fantastic season for the Lake Orion volleyball team, but unfortunately Lake Orion and Clarkson tend to get in each other's way every year. Lake Orion will lose Miss Volleyball candidate Nita Horning to Cincinnati but I'm sure this team will bounce back next year, as they almost always do. As we mentioned on the last episode, the Lake Orion football team was able to sneak into the playoffs after having a 4-5 record, but their strength of schedule allowed them a first-round match against Rochester Adams, who had played the Dragons earlier in the season. The Dragons fell behind early in the first quarter as quarterback Parker Pico and his brother running back Tate Pico both had touchdown runs. However, at the end of the quarter, Raymond Payne broke some tackles off a reverse to put the Dragons only one score back of Adams. Early in the second, Parker Pico scored a second rushing touchdown, giving Adams the two-score lead once again. Yet again, Lake Orion was able to respond with a score of their own from Billy Roberson on a run from 35 yards out. But of course, on the Highlanders' ensuing drive, Parker Pico scored his third rushing touchdown, this time from 78 yards. Then again, with the first half winding down, Parker Pico got his fourth touchdown from 60 yards out, giving Adams the lead 35 to 13 and putting Pico over 200 rushing yards as a quarterback. Midway through the third quarter, the Dragons were able to find the end zone from a TR to Dorian Hill pass. And the Dragons went for the two point conversion, but failed unfortunately as they trailed 19 to 35. Towards the end of the quarter, the Dragons were able to block a field goal attempt. So they got the ball back, but Adams forced a three and out. Immediately following, Parker Pico got his fifth score, breaking tackles and finding the end zone to extend the lead 42-19. to Early on in the fourth, Lake Orion showed they would not go away as Payne scored another touchdown, this time off of a sweep play. Lake Orion converted this time on the two-point conversion with Lake Orion now trailing 27-14. to However, Parker Pico responded yet again with his sixth rushing score of the game. He just had himself a night. Lake Orion did get one more score from Billy Roberson for the final touchdown of the game, but it was just a little too late as Lake Orion fell 49 to 35. It was an up and down season for the Dragons, but they fought a lot of tough opponents and had a chance in a playoff game. They played a lot of great players and it seemed like that was the difference in a few of the games. Lake Orion will look to improve in the off season and come back stronger next year. Now with the fall sports season over, we look towards what the winter season will bring. We will mainly be focusing on girls and boys basketball along with hockey throughout their seasons with some wrestling and swimming as well. For past episodes of the sports update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meeting. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. And for even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. And also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. And back here in the studio after that highlight of kind of the wrap-up of the fall sports season for uh, the Lake Orion Dragons and... Uh, you know, we've been following cross country and football and the soccer team did uh, a, a decent job and on TV cameras were there recording all those games. And those games, are, did you know, like all of those are live streamed. Yes. So the community can see them and uh, enjoy those uh, at their leisure at Video On Demand at OrionOnTV.org, uh, free of charge. So, um, yeah, sports is now kind of transitioning into the Basketball. winter season. Yes, Basketball. basketball's coming up. Hockey is just around oh. the corner. Tryouts, I believe, are this week or should be wrapping up this week. And uh, guys and girls basketball, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, what else I think that's about it because volleyball wraps up in the fall, oh, too. Oh, is that right? Yep. 
I believe they're still playing. So, uh, but yeah, the new season comes on, and I love basketball. Are you? you kind of. You get tired of the whistle? I'm more of a hockey guy. Are you? Yeah, I'm more of a you hockey guy. You like throwing guy. the elbows, Oh, eh? yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> no, I used to referee hockey, so that's why. Really? I oh, yeah. So you can skate. Oh, yeah. Referees can skate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no skater. Really? Yeah. I just learned something about my friend here. How long have we known each other? I didn't know that. About oh, 10 years, probably. Easy. At least, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. where's the stripes? We got to get you in stripes. Well, I got him in the closet <laughs> there, still in the closet, the old uniform, the oh, old skates. Oh, that's so funny. So, yes. um, so anything, you know, fall's kind of wrapping up, but it doesn't mean that activities around the Orient area um, are letting up at all, right? There's nope. always something, something going on here in Lake Orion. There's a 5K. There's a, uh, a pub crawl. There's, <laughs> you know, something over at Canterbury Village, all these good things. So ONTV, TV, um, I think every week we've put together this uh, quick video highlight of all the things you can do here around the Orient area. It's called Quick Hits. And we release it out on Facebook, uh, put it on our channels, and so on. So here's a brief uh, overview of all the th activities and fun things you can do around the Orion area this week. The fifth wave Battle of the Books kicks off on Thursday at the Orion Library from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Stop by to register and find out how to form teams who can mentor the 2023 digital activities and more. This year's guest author will also be revealed. The Oakland County Parks is celebrating Park Appreciation Day on Friday. Visitors can enjoy the park for free with access to natural areas, trails, dog parks, and all the park amenities. The Veterans Day ceremony will be held at the Orient Center this Friday beginning at 7 p.m. Come by and honor those who have served our country. The Antique Toy and Comic Expo will be held on Saturday at the Orient Center from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Buy, sell, and trade comic books, collectibles, and memorabilia at this annual swap meet. Parking and admission is free. For vendor information and registration, visit OrionParks.com. On Saturday, the Orion Library will, will be hosting a Retro Gaming Day in honor of International Games Month. Come by with family and friends between 1 and 4 p.m. to play retro board games, video games, and enjoy some refreshments. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for mostly sunny skies with a high of 63 and low 42. Partly cloudy on Thursday with a high of 70 and low 50. Light rain on Friday with a high of 68 and low 55, partly cloudy on Saturday with a high of 43 and low 34, and partly cloudy again on Sunday with a high of 41 and low of 30. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. And back in the studio again, um, Quick Hits. Uh, look forward every week. Uh, Owen TV puts that together just to give you an update of what's happening around town. You can't sit around and say, I don't know what to do. I, there's nothing to do around Lake Orion. No, there's plenty to do, and Owen TV does the best mm -hmm. to bring you that information. Um, uh, we were talking about the election. Uh, the election is today. When this program airs, it will be election day. A um, lot of hard workers, so many volunteers working around the township to make the elections. Yes. Have you ever acted, uh, worked as a... Oh well, yeah, I have the precinct eight here. I'll be one. I'm the co-chairman, so been here for the last three years here at Lake or I mean, it's, uh, Orion Center yep. here, and uh, yeah, a lot of work goes into. We've got to give a lot of dedication to Penny Schultz. She does a fantastic job. Fantastic. A job. Absolutely, Penny. We usually um, have. For, she, I think she was supposed to be one Most of the terrible. guests, but oh. you know, this time of year is so, so busy, busy yeah. and especially with. Uh, you know, training new election workers right. and making sure everything is secured and running smoothly to get that information off to the county to get those final tallies in. Mm -hmm. it's, it is unbelievable the amount of work oh, they do. It's, it's and um, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And so, uh, you know, thumbs up to Penny Schultz and sure, the crew and all the she volunteers and you, Jim, for doing your, you know, work in your that, civic. So. Yeah, awesome. So we are encouraging you to get out and vote if you haven't done so already, it's, it's key. We know we have uh, certain proposals coming down the line. We have uh, new face candidates coming down the line, school board candidates, village uh, council candidates. There's a lot on, on this well, there ballot. there is. You've got to really do some reading. You do. Do some and reading. See what you want to vote for. Absolutely. And be informed. I mean, Absol that's, that's oh, the gosh. whole thing. I always find that you read the proposals as listed on the ballot, and you go, I could go either way. How do they write, right? It's, it's amazing how they write those things. So reading ahead of time to get the details you need is, is yes. key. 
Again, this is running basically the afternoon of election day. So uh, hopefully uh, you are educated and you do your reading or talk to a neighbor and try to get Absolutely. that information. So here's a little PSA uh, we put together um, about uh, the proposals and what your ballot will look like so you don't go in uh, kind of blind or uh, no mystery here. So take a look at this PSA and we'll see you in a bit. Hi everyone, I'm Penny Schultz, your Orion Township Clerk. Tuesday, November 8th, 2022 is the general election for the purpose of electing federal, state, and local representatives and for voting on state and local proposals. Due to the number of candidates and proposals, a two-sided ballot is necessary. Please remember to vote both sides of your ballot to ensure your voice is heard on all levels. Polls will open at 7 o'clock a.m. and remain open until 8 o'clock p.m. and all voters will vote at their regular polling location. Please review your voter ID card to confirm your polling location as all voting precincts were moved out of the Lake Orion Community School Districts starting in 2022. You may also visit www.411votes or scan this QR code to find your new permanent polling location. Additional voting information is also available by visiting the Secretary of State's website at michigan.gov backslash vote for precinct information, sample ballots, and proposal language or candidate information. Please note that Thursday, October 24th is the last day to register to vote or change your address for the November 8, 2022 general election. All Orion Township precincts are handicap accessible in compliance with the voting accessibility requirements of the Help America Vote Act, voting instructions in an audio or braille format are available to voters prior to the election or at the polls on election day. Please feel free to contact me anytime if additional information is needed at 248-391-0304 or PSHULTS at oriontownship.org. Trained election inspectors will answer questions about the voting process at your precinct on election day, or you may wish to contact the clerk's office in advance of the election at 248-391-0304 with questions or concerns. It's my goal to equip every voter with the information to assist them in the voting process. Absent voter ballots for the November 8, 2022 general election are available at the Orion Township Clerk's Office. To obtain an application for absent voter ballots, please call 248-391-0304 or come to the Clerk's Office, which is located at 2323 Joslin Road between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. The last day absent voter ballots can be mailed to you is Friday, November 4th. The clerk's office will be open from 7 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, November 5th for absent voter balloting only. For further information, please contact the clerk's office at 248-391-0304 or elections at oriontownship.org. I'm Penny Schultz, and I'm looking forward to another outstanding election in Orion Township. We're looking forward to seeing you at the polls on election day. Thank you. All right, uh, Jim, you brought up a good point. I said, hey, take a look at this election PSA. And you said, what's a PSA? <laughs> <laughs> Public service announcement. Good. So, <laughs> now I know. <laughs> no, that's why you're here. Yeah. I mean, we, we get in the lingo and we talk TV speak, and sometimes we forget. Maybe the viewer doesn't know what a mm -hmm. PSA is. So, um, but yeah, great information. Um, please get out and vote. Oh. Do your duty. And, the, you know, our crew here, uh, we just found out that uh, three of the four of us are volunteers 
uh, working at our precinct. So thank you guys for uh, doing your part. And uh, please do your civic duty. Yeah. Get, um, you, get, get a neighbor, get a couple of people to go with you. You know, I mean, if they can't drive, you know, drive them, you know, because it's so important, this election. I mean, just so much to uh, deal with, you know. So please, yeah, get informed and vote. That's yep. two key points. And, and, and not just this election. Oh. You should always Every vote. <laughs> I mean, you know, as a kid, it was always, in, you know, my parents green. took yeah. me to the polls and said, you'll do this. This is yeah. what you must do. This is how democracy works. Yeah. So, um, Jim, thanks for sitting in, Jim man. Jim was welcome. Anytime, anytime. I'm telling you, he was hot off the press when we called him. He comes zipping in. He's like, oh, oh, are we on the air yet? <laughs> no, he, it was, I mean, he really bailed us out uh, after no couple, problem. just getting off, you know, uh, your big trip to Italy and, I don't know what the jet lag situation Nothing. is. Nothing. It worked you, out you, real good this time. Did you? Yeah. Okay. It's only eight hours, so it wasn't bad. Oh, yeah. That's not so that's, bad. That's an easy one. Yeah, Anything no international over eight. dateline jump, right? So. Well, uh, you know, you still had six hour difference between uh, Italy and here. Okay. But it uh, seemed like it, I was able to transition pretty quickly. Awesome. So bail this out. Thank you, Jim. As always, <laughs> uh, I was, uh, former volunteer of the year here at ONTV. <laughs> okay. Or always a volunteer. Always of the a volunteer. Yes. Like a Marine, right? You're always a Marine. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> correct. So, Jim, thanks, man. As no always, problem. thank you for tuning in to Orient Today. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at ONTV. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you next time.